I just realized that I had not started recording. So um, I will do that. I guess I, I guess I was recording. Okay, back to public <clears throat> comments. And um, I do want to say, Arthur, I don't think you mentioned it. I see we have a call-in user. So call-in user, um, the last four of your cell phone and in, or landline and in 9496. If you would like to raise your hand, um, you do that by pressing a star nine, I believe. Do I have to do that or is the, the, the person has to do it? Sorry. <clears throat> Ariel, did you hear that? Am, is that? am I supposed to do the star nine or is the caller supposed to do star nine? Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking and apparently I hadn't unmuted myself. So I um, unmuted Alice Horowitz. <laughs> Um, and I was just telling the, um, the call-in user that if they wanted to raise their hand, they would do so by pressing star nine, but they have not yet raised their hand. Ah, okay. And Alice is unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alice. Hi. Okay. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for your service. I, I really appreciate it. And... Um, Let's see, I am co-chair of the Glen Ellen Forum SDC committee, and I understand that the North Valley MAC will not be dealing with development issues of the SDC per se, but that there are some crossover issues like traffic and housing um, where we have common ground. So I just wanted to put it out there um, that if anyone is interested in joining our committee or knowing more about our committee, so please let us know. Um, you can write to me at sdc.eldridgecommittee at gmail.com and I'll, I'll put that into the chat or whatever, I get that to you. Um, or, or if you're not interested in joining a committee but you have some thoughts that you would like to share or more you'd like to know or information, um, yeah, please uh, do contact us through sdc.eldridgecommittee at gmail.com. And um, I also just wanted to say, to, to make clear if anyone is, is wondering what our committee is about, that you know, we're not, we're, we're 14 active members right now and we're not a committee of people who are wholly opposed to change at the SDC. That's really not the case at all. We've been very active since we formed in 2016 because we realize that um, change is inevitable and we would like to have a say in how that goes. So we really do embrace change and we want to make sure that it's change that is good for our community and our environment and not just good for anyone else who might be interested. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, participating more in the North Valley MAC meetings as a uh, as they continue on in the future. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> thank you, Allison, and thank you for all your um, all your work on behalf of the community through the forum and, and other ways. Uh, so it doesn't look like we have any more hands raised at this time. Okay. Um, so I, I believe now we have an opportunity for council members to um, respond to uh, the public oh, comments. Oh, I spoke too soon. It looks yeah. like um, Lori Pyle has raised her hand. Okay. So let me get the timer back up here. One second. Uh, <laughs> participant. It's a lot to juggle. Okay. Um, I don't know how the clerk of the board does this. Okay. Um, so Lori, you should see a prompt come up on your screen. Hello. Hi, Lori. Well, hi. 
<laughs> now I'm on a computer this time instead of my phone, so I really don't know what I'm doing, but I've been trying to get in for a bit. Well, I can, I can hear you. I think everybody else can too. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. I can't see anybody though. So what do I do? Um, I couldn't tell you, <laughs> but can you hear us? It's you just can... a screen with a countdown on it. Uh, yes, that's because uh, you're going to, um, I, I thought you were going to make public comments. So there's a two minute time limit for public, public comments. So <laughs> oh, you I get to... it. Okay, I just, I, I had seen you before, but then I, you weren't seeing me or hearing me. So I went out and I got back in again. And so I don't know. I can, I can see your name, but that's, I can hear your voice, but I don't see an image. But um, did, did you have any thoughts you wanted to share? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You can mute me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just listen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so it doesn't look like we have any more uh, members of the public uh, to comment at this time. So, um, so now's an opportunity for council members to respond to the uh, public comments. I've got a question. Okay, yeah, Council Member Cooper. The lady that addressed the SDC, I'm very new to this. I'm in Kenwood, so I'm not right there, but a lot of people here are very interested in that. How would, how would one get background or, I just, I, I just know basics on it. How do you get a more, more in-depth knowledge of what's going on? Um, <clears throat> Let's see, uh, uh, Alice, do you want to respond to that or, um, or Melissa? So, so public comment isn't really a back and forth, but um, oh, I, I think okay. there's some other yeah. folks, no. on, there's some other council members who might be able to answer that, Judd, or, or I'm, happy to, I'm happy to send you some resources um, as well. Thank you. There's a, yeah, there's a, um, uh, the SDC, there's a transition website, I know, uh, I haven't kept up to it as much as a lot of other people, but yeah, there's, yeah, Council Member Daly. If, if you, if the easiest way might be just to send an email to forum at glenellen.org, and then we can have Alice respond to you with links to some some public websites that have all of the information about the specific planning process, um, and some of the results and write ups from a, the recent meetings and visioning sessions. Thank you. And, and I would add that uh, there is a special site on Permit Sonoma website uh, called uh, Sonoma Developmental Center. Go onto Permit Sonoma website and you can sign up for notifications for the community planning meetings. Um, and if you, uh, and Ariel will send you a, the, the links to a couple of those um, sources of information. Okay, so they're fairly, they're fairly extensive. Yes. It's a very complicated uh, thing, but I can imagine, yeah. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> All right, any other um, comments from council members? I wanted to, uh, yeah, council member Newhouser. My recollection from our last meeting was that we had agreed on three minutes uh, for the public to speak. Um, I think that's fairly typical at most public meetings. Um, so I, I was a little surprised to see two minutes. Um, yeah, I apologize if that was, um, I'm not quite sure where the, um, well, the reason I went down to two is I wasn't sure if there was gonna be a lot of public comments and I, and I thought we have a lot to go over tonight with uh, discussing priorities. Uh, so I thought, um, it seems like in my experience, two minutes is enough for people to, to make their point. Um, but, and Ariel, I wasn't, I'm not totally clear. Is this, is this the purview of the whole it, council or is it the purview? It, it, of the it chair? is the purview of the chair to decide yeah. um, the length of public comment uh, for exactly the reason expressed by Arthur. It depends on the flow of the meeting, the topics of the meeting, 
and you'll be discouraged to know that as chair of the board of supervisors, I am now limiting people to 90 seconds. So, <laughs> <laughs> because we have packed agendas and oh. so in general, uh, you know, the chair can use discretion, uh, but it really is the discretion of the chair and it could fluctuate with every meeting, uh, depending on the agenda and the number of issues that you wanna discuss. So, um, Arthur, oh, the, let the power go to your head. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so be it. I mean, I'm feeling like two minutes seems to be working pretty well. I know, I know, um, you know, at least one person probably felt a little um, short on that one, but. Um, Let's try two minutes this time and we'll see we can talk about it. I, I think that's a yeah. something we can discuss as a council if we want. Uh, but I guess since this isn't back and forth, I was thinking I, I could ask uh, Katie if she had anything that she didn't get to cover in her two minutes. Is that but that's um, is that sort of off the possibilities or um, I mean, you're, you're the chair, Arthur, so if you would like to ask her, um, I am happy to unmute her again, um, but it, it did sound like she gave a cohesive um, statement. Okay, well, Katie, why don't uh, raise your hand if you if you felt like you did, there were some important points you didn't get to make in your two minutes. I am not seeing a raised hand. Okay, all right, well, thanks. Thank you for keeping it uh, concise, everybody. I think people did well with their two minutes. Um, now I'd like to introduce um, <clears throat> Supervisor Gorin, um, who has been serving our district for how many years now? Too long. I'm Too ready long. to resign. Oh, wait, I haven't <laughs> even been sworn in for my third term and I'm ready to resign. Um, just a really brief report. Uh, yeah, it's been a very long, uh, exhausting year for all of us. It's not just me. Uh, we've discovered um, the virtue of uh, virtual uh, meetings, which is great. We don't have to get into our cars and convene in a meeting, uh, meeting room together. And that is both a blessing and a curse because it means that we are not meeting together. We're not having those conversations together. And I think every government entity, whether it's a municipal advisory council or the board of supervisors, really struggling to maintain relationships uh, when we're confined to meeting virtually and not having face-to-face -face conversations with members of our, of our community. So we'll be glad when vaccinations are going to be uh, distributed. And that's the good news uh, that I'm able to convey to you is that we will be receiving about 10,000 doses of uh, vaccines for COVID in um, on another week or two. And we're trying to prioritize who might receive those uh, vaccines, healthcare workers, um, first responders, uh, residents in long-term care facilities, plus their, the workers that work with them. Look at the where the, the impact of the infections occur. And that's probably where we want to focus the uh, vaccinations, at least initially. Um, and I think it's incumbent on all of us uh, to model uh, why vaccinations are a good thing. We have some anti-vax sentiments in Sonoma County for legitimate and maybe not so legitimate reasons. So I understand people's concerns about it, but sign me up. I'm going to get one um, soon. And, uh, and I hope we hope that as many people as possible from the community could receive vaccinations in the first six months of next year so that we could open up more broadly. Our children could go back into the classroom, our businesses could reopen, and we could once again come together as a community. But it will take all of us working together to um, just move beyond some of the concerns that people might have and I understand legitimately, they may be concerns at least initially, but we can hopefully get through that. And the second message I wanna deliver is, man, it's challenging uh, for economic reasons. Uh, our um, um, eviction moratorium uh, ordinance is expiring at the end of the year, as well as the state and federal. We intend to renew that. 
uh, tiered off of the state and federal uh, and our sick leave legislation is uh, due to expire. We're going to extend that uh, tiering off of the state and federal legislation. Uh, we are gearing up to have a substantive conversation in January about once again, putting together packages for rental assistance, as well as continuing the program, uh, conti uh, continuing the funding for a special COVID unit and all of the staff members and contact tracers uh, as part of that. Um, and so we're really concerned about the economic health and the physical health of our community. You may or may not know that, and I think Kate is on our Latinx task force uh, Friday calls. Uh, we're really focusing on the health of our Latinx population, especially they are being disproportionately impacted by COVID because more often than not, they are holding the essential work in restaurants, in hospitality, in the vineyards, and they're being exposed. And they often live in crowded conditions. I don't want to stereotype, but often that's, that's the inner relationships happening. So we are really working through Cura, Lalu Center, and a lot of our partner agencies to make sure that we have the pop-up testing where it needs to be, to ensure that they are receiving the gift cards, which are due to expire at the end of the year for testing and uh, the rental assistance and assistance for stipends for quarantining. We are completing negotiations for a series of rooms at a motel in the city of Sonoma so that it makes it easier for our population to quarantine if in fact they are diagnosed with COVID and they don't have a safe place to quarantine in, in the home. Um, there's some articles coming out uh, regarding our homeless services. Um, the Sonoma Sun is publishing some things. The Kenwood Press is publishing some things. And we have a whole series of comments about what we've been doing as a community to um, uh, provide permanent supportive housing, to rebuild the pallet shelter homes at Los Gullicos, to extend the contract at Los Gullicos, and to work to support SOS in the city of Sonoma, providing meals and day services, but not being able to move forward with an emergency winter shelter. We have negotiated at, with Los Gullicos to provide, mm -hmm. I think, 10 pallet shelter homes to uh, how Sonoma Valley residents and thank you Kathy King for negotiating with COTS for another five or six beds um, for the emergency winter shelter and that's actually uh, much more effective in connecting with people or connecting people with services so that they can then move into permanent supportive housing. So we are um, there's one other thing that you should be aware of and that is Next Tuesday's meeting, bring your jammies. It's going to be a long meeting. We're going to say goodbye to Supervisor Shirley Zane for sure. So we'll have some heartfelt comments at that meeting. But in the afternoon, we're about two o'clock, we're going to have a high level discussion regarding vegetation management using PGE funds. And a number of the folks here, uh, Arthur and others, are fire survivors and they've been outreaching to us about how we should expend those funds. And we're really going to look at those uh, investments strategically. We can't just fund this and this and this and this. Um, we really need to think through how we're going to do this systemically uh, that would really benefit Sonoma Valley as well as elsewhere in the county, knowing that the fires tend to come over the Mayacamas, over Cavedale Trinity, and certainly over St. Helena Road, most recently, Poor Hood Mountain is pretty scorched. So we'll make those investments and we'll hire some folks to give us some good advice on the best, best way that we can invest those one-time funds. And then immediately following that, we will have a discussion regarding repaving uh, some of the roads that were in the fire damaged areas that are really pretty damaged in the debris cleanup and rebuilding effort Certainly O'Donnell Lane um, is part of my list. Hanno, perhaps Dunbar, all of the roads in um, the Glen Ellen area, trying to figure out where Tree Haven is. It might be on the next tier down, um, but there are a lot of, lot of roads that 
should have been paved a long time ago and we may press forward on repaving them using the one-time funding uh, but we can't pave every road. Uh, 1,376 miles of county maintained roads and trust me that funding does not go very far. So I think I'll conclude my report with that. Those are the items coming forward. I'm counting the days till I'm no longer chair of the Board of Supervisors. Linda Hopkins will be sworn in as the new chair and I'm going to focus my efforts supporting you as the Municipal Advisory Council's climate change, climate change, climate change. Of course, looking at our roads and the transformation of the Sonoma Developmental Center. But I'm also involved in a lot of regional issues such as the San Francisco Bay Restoration Authority funding projects around the Bay for adaptation. And I serve on the Regional Impact Council for the Bay Area, looking at solutions for homelessness. And um, so I'm going to keep busy as well as, oh yes, I'm rebuilding my house. <laughs> so thank you all. Thank you for being an amazing part of this organization. And I look forward to working with all of you in the next year. And I'm so excited that Ariel is uh, going to be part of your team. And we hope we'll, we'll see how that's going to continue forward. But the good news is, the bad news is I'm losing Pat Gillardi. She is retiring in April. The good news is uh, we will be elevating Ariel as our district director. So she'll be with us and using her incredible experience and skills uh, to help us guide and be my command center as well as maybe being part of your staff. We'll have to think about that. Uh, one more thing um, that I should say, uh, if any of you wanna participate in the community leader Zoom, we have them usually every Thursday from 11 to 12. We do have one tomorrow. Um, and we have two ongoing conversations, one on alternating Thursday evenings, Tomorrow night, we're having the Charla Comunitaria, a Spanish speaking conversation regarding COVID and our soon to be field representative, Karina Garcia is, is been organizing that with the help of <coughs> Cura and La Luz Center. And it's very entertaining. I speak like two words of Spanish, so I'm in and out pretty fast. But uh, on the alternating Thursdays, uh, Ariel uh, really organizes a great informational meeting for our fire survivors and uh, mental health is the topic coming up next week. So if any of you know um, fire survivors from the Wallbridge and, and um, glass fires, have them join us and we provide great information and a lot of virtual hugs. So thank you once again. I'm excited about working with you. All right, thank you Supervisor Gorin. And thank you for all you do. And I um, just want to say it's been great working with Ariel. Um, she's really on the ball and really helping things, helping pull this group uh, together and forward. So thank you, Ariel. Um, so I think now we're at the point where we can talk about um, the revised goals and priorities. Um, Ariel, would you mind putting up uh, that list up on the screen? The, either the list or the, or the table. I think the table all fits on one sheet, so. Um, yeah, no problem. Give me, give me a second. Yeah, I'll do the table. Yeah. Um, just bear with me for a second while I fiddle with all of these things. Um, yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, oh, I guess, I'm sorry, I, I missed. There's an opportunity for public comment after uh, Supervisor Gorin speaks. So uh, if anyone from the public would like to comment on, um, on the supervisor's comments or uh, oh and it looks like it looks like uh council member newhauser is raising his hand who may want to respond as well to the video. okay um okay i don't see any public hands up so um yeah council member um newhauser well i was going to launch into our next agenda item but i would like to thank Super supervisor <laughs> goran for all her services the uh, chairman of the uh, Board of Supervisors. So thank you very much. Okay, without further ado. Um, so 
There you go. I, I did, uh, if I may proceed with my comment regarding this next agenda item, I just wanted to make sure that uh, Ariel and um, Chair Dawson received my uh, written comments in an email that I sent probably 15 minutes ago. Uh, I haven't been checking my email, so. Yeah. Let's see. I, I saw it, um, I saw it, and it, I can only look at it on my phone because of a lot of technical things. Um, so I can't really process it until we're not doing the Zoom anymore. Um, oh, okay. Are, are you able to, uh, could you just read it out loud or take, you know, if it's just a few minutes? Well, it's uh, rather substantive um, uh, uh, or lengthy. Um, um, I could put it into the chat or um, I was able previously to do that and Ariel was able to grab it and put it into the bulleted form. Um, can you do, oh, you can't do that because you don't have your computer, right? Okay, well. We'll I can it. actually, I can, I can get it for you, um, council yeah. member, if you give me like a few minutes because I can forward it to my personal email and then yeah. pull it up and share it on the screen. But it'll just yeah. take me a couple minutes. Yeah, I, I'll, since I have the floor, I, if I may, I'll just say kind of the larger issue um, was that I felt like the outreach plan uh, is something that could be a standalone item um, but not necessarily have specific outreach because each of these different goals will have outreach components. And I, I would like to um, discuss the possibility of uh, um, having that incorporated in some way uh, to this process. And then I have other specific input on items um, each individual goal and action items that we can address as we get to those items. Thank you. All right, thank you, council member. Um, just to um, kind of go over the, the umbrella plan here is, um, you know, we're gonna discuss the goals and priorities and, and really all these goals are, are part of our, our scope of work, if you wanna think of it that way. I don't, uh, and we could might even add others to this um, but what, what we're trying to do tonight is to um, prioritize these goals so that we can choose three to move forward with or to be active on in the next, um, let's say, six to 12 months. Uh, it's not like an exact period of time, but what, what we want to focus on right away. And then the ones, so we're going to have a vote. Um, after we discuss, we'll have a vote and see where people's sentiments lie with, with which of these goals should be uh, priorities and see how that vote comes out. And hopefully we'll, it'll be some clear winners and we can um, form three ad hoc committees that can, um, can work, uh, work on those goals and bring it back to the MAC. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, so basically, um, I think we don't want to get, and, and I, don't, I haven't seen what Mark wrote, so this may not apply, but we don't want to get too much into the, the weeds on the pos possible action steps because those were just examples. Uh, you know, the, the ad hoc committees, uh, you know, they'll look at each, whichever goal that they're tasked with and they'll decide what, um, you know, what needs to be done for, for outreach or whatever. And, but I would certainly agree that we could put, um, you know, the outreach committee, assuming there is one, uh, would, would um, communicate with the other ad hoc committees as far as what outreach is needed under their particular umbrella. Uh, Chair Dawson, um, Council Member Eagles has her hand up. Yeah, Council Member Eagles. Thank you, Chair Dawson. Good, good evening, all. So, so um, Council Member Newhouser, just to understand this, because I, I would take it even a step further and, and, and suggest to you all that, that the outreach plan be part of the scope of work, but sit outside our goals, if possible. In other words, we're not going to vote out an outreach plan, are we? <laughs> so 
I, I, I kind of want to sort of set that to one side and then look at the other goals. And, and certainly I would agree the outreach plan will incorporate communication around any goals that we agree. Can I get my fellow council members feedback on, on that? And maybe that's what council member Newhauser was sort of, was sort of alluding to. Yeah, council okay. member Nardo Morgan. Yeah, I, yes, uh, I, council member Eagles, I concur on that. I think that the outreach plan is really crucial in everything that we're doing because without reaching out to the public and letting them know what we're doing and getting their input, we really don't have a max. So I, I think the outreach plan is, is just a, a very important part of this and could just be the umbrella if nothing else. Um, that, I agree with you on that. All right, thanks. Thanks council member. Um, any other comments from the council? I, I have one, but I'll save it uh, till other people have spoken. All right, well, I'll just jump in. Um, so I, I concur yeah, um, with council members, uh, Eagles and Morgan and, um, and yeah, I agree. I think that the outreach committee um, is, is kind of a given. So can, maybe we can just assume that that's gonna be an ad hoc committee. And then instead of picking um, three um, priorities for the next year, we'll, we'll just pick two in addition to the outreach committee. Um, I don't know, do we need to vote on that, Ariel? Or, um... So you don't, you don't need to vote um, on that. So I mean, I, uh, it, it's up to you, but I, I think that the way that this, um, you know, you guys should discuss and discuss, um, perhaps hear public comment. Um, and we do have a poll. So once your discussion has kind of People have said what they need to say. We, we have a really simple Zoom poll um, where you guys can all kind of pick your top three or four um, and then we can see the real time feedback. It's kind of the virtual equivalent to putting up poster boards around the room and giving you colored dots. Um, but but I mean, I think if, if you guys get to an agreement um, at the end, you'll have a motion on, you know, three priority goals and, and perhaps ad hocs or, or however that works. But you, you don't need to vote until you do the vote at the, at the end. Okay. Thanks, Arnold. Yeah, Council Member Newhauser. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up real quick. Uh, the reason why I, that it occurred to me that, that this item was, it was more all encompassing is that there were specific items underneath the outreach plan that were begging to be placed into specific goals like outreach to um, this strengthening ties between sub communities. This seems like a community building exercise. And if this is going to be a specific plan that we uh, or a, an activity that we want to address, I think that we should fit it under a broader goal such as community building or um, you know, community diversity development. Um, so this is, that was the rationale for um, kind of breaking it out. We can develop an outreach plan to address how we do outreach, what is the means, what are the, the process, um, and, um, but not necessarily specific items within that. Thank you. Thanks council member. Yeah, Council Member Daly. Thank you, Chair Dawson. Um, I, I did, uh, albeit a little bit late, use the template that you sent out to kind of share with people in the community. And I just, off the top of my head, typed in as many email addresses as I had in my um, contacts and sent about 30 emails out. And, and I did receive feedback um, from three people that were, were fairly similar, even though these three people are, are, are very different um, in terms of how I know them and, and where they live in Glen Ellen and Kenwood. Um, they, they all mentioned the SDC as being very top of mind for them and concern about the future of SDC. And then two people coincidentally mentioned that the SDC and housing kind of blend together, um, that the future of the SDC, of course, will have a housing component as defined um, in the SDC specific plan. So, you know, seeing those two things merge together, you know, maybe 
both housing under SDC and housing on its own may be appropriate. And um, outreach was also at the top of a list. And uh, one of the people mentioned the, um, the urgency of emergency preparedness as well. So I just wanted to, people took the time to give their feedback. I wanted to make sure that that, that was incorporated into the, the meeting tonight. Thanks, council member. Yeah, council member Cooper. Yeah, can I just follow up uh, Councilwoman Dowling? Um, I'm very, I'd be very interested in the, uh, the housing issue generally. That's probably in my world in Kenwood, mm -hmm. what I hear most, that in traffic um, is what I hear most about. And I think that's kind of the future of our community. And so I'm just agreeing with the idea of the SDC looking at that and uh, expanding affordable housing is kind of connected somehow. And I really think that ought to be in the, in the top three is my vote. So anyway, that's all. All right. Thanks, Council Member. Yeah. Other comments? Uh, Vice Chair Goss and um, Council Member Eagles both have their hands up. Okay, um, Vice Chair Goss. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I was on mute. I was wondering if it might be possible rather than each council member advocating for something that they feel strongly about or even reporting back there, if we take a look at the polling system you described, uh, Ariel and, and Arthur, you alluded to, a poll, uh, if, if we have the, it's like taking your temperature and seeing where we are. It may be that we're all in agreement already on, on the top three. Uh, but I think if we could go ahead and do the poll and experience the poll and see the results of the poll, it might help us clarify rather than going through and identifying our each individual uh, advocate or favorite. Thank you. Thanks. Vice Chair Das. yeah, I would. Uh, and uh, Council Member Eagles. Uh, thank you, Chair Dawson. Yes, I don't disagree, but before we, we do that, um, I'm struggling a little bit with, with two things that pertain to the last two comments. And the first is, I, I don't wanna pick um, a, a goal that we, we you know, that, 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 that we, don't have, we don't have much input on. And I, don't, I, I confess that I don't really understand except for that one bullet that's th that, uh, for affordable housing that says inform homeowners about ADU incentives. I don't have a feel for how we might impact that. And, and I know we're going to have an ad hoc group to look at that, but if someone feels that they could speak to that a little more, that would be very helpful to me even before we did a quick straw poll to uh, the council member or Vice Chair Doss's point. And the other question I have sort of related, you know, there's so many folks involved in the STC issue and I certainly understand it's really top of mind for folks, you know, for all of us here on the call as well, but you know, understanding a little bit better before we even take a straw poll where we can appropriately advise on that process. I know we've mentioned traffic and, and housing, but if anyone feels that they have a the knowledge to flesh that out a little bit more, it would be helpful to me. Thank you. Thanks council member. Um, well, I'll, I'll speak to the affordable housing. Um, you know, I, I mean, these are, these are just general goals. So I, I haven't, spend a lot of time thinking about how this, you know, what we could do, but, um, but beyond informing homeowners about ADU incentives, um, you know, maybe there's some resources at the county that, I mean, there's a number of lots in my neighborhood that are, have not yet been built upon. And I, you know, I don't know the status, but there may well be some, some lots that could have, um, you know, affordable houses put on them and, you know, it may be some alternative form of ownership. Um, I mean, Vice Chair Doss is involved with the uh, the Housing Land Trust. I'm not, not sure if that's quite the right name, but um, and so there may be some opportunities there. And uh, so I guess I, when I put that as a goal, I thought this would be something to explore and see what you know what resources might be there to increase that. Um, I don't know, Vice Chair Doss, did, did you want to speak to that at all? Or? In regards to the housing. Yeah. No, I just think it's always ob obviously critical. And as uh, Council Member Cooper mentioned, it's a very big issue 
in the Kenwood area. I didn't have anything specific. I, I did ask that sometime in the next year that we have a presentation regarding housing land trust and how it works because Sonoma Valley hasn't participated, although we have placed over a hundred homes up and, and, and placed over a hundred homes in the last several years in Sonoma County. So anyway, uh, we'll come back to that. If, if it's designated as one of the top three, I'm not sure that it will be. Thank you, Vice Chair. Yeah, and um, just a quick response and then to uh, Council Member Dickey. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think uh, we can, if we vote for other priorities besides housing, we can still have a presentation at some point next year. It I'm hoping so, yes. Doesn't mean we have to just ignore it. Yeah, Council Member Dickey. Uh, just in regards to ADU and outreach, I think it's a valuable exercise in the sense that um, the rules regarding ADUs have changed, uh, both from size to siting, uh, the financial incentives have changed. Uh, there are members of the community who may not be aware of that. Um, and so I, I do think it's a valuable exercise to, to you know, familiarize ourselves with it and then be able to, uh, and, you know, communicate that to our local community. I, th I think it's, it's really important. We live in a rural environment. There are larger lots. There are constraints, obviously. Um, but but I, I think it's, it's, it's important. Um, and it's obviously going to tie into SDC and affordable housing there as well. Um, so it's, it's kind of a holistic conversation. All right, thank you, Council Member. I also had a response to, um, to Council Member Eagle's comment about, um, you know, there are a lot of people working on SDC issues and, and um, thankfully, I feel like I, I'm able to take a little more of a back seat because so many people I feel are representing my interests and um, I'm happy to jump in when needed, but, um, but one thought that I've had as far as the MAC goes with the SDC is that there, like, there is, there is no plan yet. You know, they're working on the alternatives, and you know, I mean, on one level, it makes sense for us to get our thoughts in as early as possible. But maybe, it, but it also makes sense for us to respond to what the consultant comes up with, which would be a few months down the road. So, um, so I'm just wondering about the timing for getting involved with SDC. It was uh, there maybe a you know the, the a better time, a, a better times and, and not so good times. Uh, and I just want to interject um, as the admin, and then we can go to Mark that, um, um, you know, I don't know, I, I will find out, I don't know that the North Valley MAC can engage to make a comment on the SDC proposals or engage in the planning process. Uh -huh. You all can as individuals and you can inform the community about the meetings, um, encourage people to go. But I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying it gets tricky, especially because it's SVCAC that has the land use, and even they aren't going to really engage until there is a proposal, right? So um, I just want to caution you all before you put a lot of hope or energy into thinking about drafting something. Um, you know, I've I've asked the question and gotten the response that, oh, well, we'll have to think about that. I don't know. It makes me uncomfortable. So um, I, I don't know that that's something you should spend a lot of time on. But again, I know it's a huge issue for the community. Um, and you are all encouraged to engage um, as individuals. Thank you, Ariel. Yeah. And, and I would, um, I mean, my vision, if we do get involved, would be to, it would be within our purview of housing and transportation. So, um, but that would be something to, if we if we did comment if we did if we had the opportunity to comment that's what we would comment on, um, and then Council Member Newhauser, did you have your hand up? Uh, yes, I just got a uh, a chat back from Ariel asking me to say what I'm putting into the chat uh, because I realize it has to go on the public record. So bear with me. Um, I, I'm sending it via chat because I thought it might be easier to copy and paste into the document if, if need be for review by the rest of the council. Oh, and, and um, 
Sorry to interrupt, Mark. I have your document now. So if you'd like me to share that on the screen, I can share it. It's just all, all at once. And so don't want to overwhelm people with all of it. Um, but I can do that as well, if you'd like. Yeah, we can do it piecemeal. And I can just put it in um, into the chat and as we go through each goal. Um, however you think is the most uh, efficient way to do it. Well, here, here, let's, since this is what we're on, let's do this. So, um, and I think if I'm understanding this correctly, Councilmember Newhouser had um, suggested some possible action steps under the potential priority goal of expanding affordable housing. So I realize that there's incentives, but I think that there are also constraints. And as um, uh, Matt mentioned that the rules are changing. Um, so I think that it's, and I've also looked into this and I realize that there are serious constraints um, in adding rooms and such um, to any house. So it's good for people to know and we could provide a documentation to people that would not only give them a reality check on what they can and cannot do, um, but it would also serve as an incentive because it would make the, um, we could provide some information on uh, what are our housing needs in the area and here are things that you can do if you are to redevelop in order to provide affordable housing. So I think it's just kind of a one way to get the word out to the community and a service that we could provide um, the other is just kind of a pet peeve, and I think that the community can weigh in on this at another point in time, and that is the issue of vacation rentals and how they're affecting uh, the housing stock, um, especially when most of these housing uh, rentals are on the higher end, um, and a lot of uh, speculation is being had in that development. Um, so this is something that we could do. We could look at this issue. We could actually crunch the numbers and, you know, uh, get feedback from the community through the uh, North Valley Mac and then feed that back into the community as recommendations or at least data to the Board of Supervisors to consider when deciding whether or not to continue to allow this unfettered uh, development of how of vacation rentals, just suggestions. <laughs> Thanks, Mark, yeah. Um, you know, one, one thing to go back to the outreach, uh, cause I see that down at the bottom, but just just um, to your point earlier about how, you know, there's gonna be outreach in any one of these goals. And I, I agree with that. And I also think that or part of my vision for the outreach is to um, contact or uh, people that maybe aren't that engaged with, you know, the the parts of the community that we're engaged with, and and find out, you know, what are the needs of people, say, in the apartments down in Madrone. You know, like I, I don't know anybody down there, but you know, there may be some there may be some issues there that we don't even know about that wouldn't be on our list of goals, but maybe should be. Um, so that's that's a more general outreach than you know, thinking it just goal by goal. Well, do you want to, um, should we go down Mark's, go through Mark's um, document since, since it's up? Uh, yeah, Council Member Dickey. I agree about the previous um, comment about outreach being, um, let's, let's just for sake of a, a word, administrative. You know, if we define some ways that we want to you know, consistently perform outreach. That way we don't have to um, come up with priorities as to what we are going to do. Um, because obviously over the course of, gosh, even the next six months, things are gonna change. And what we may determine tonight is not necessarily gonna be a priority six months from now. But we may have in our discussions an opportunity amongst all of us to say, hey, we can do this, we can do that. And we have sort of a list of things that we can do as outreach to perform the task that we may prioritize 
at a later date. Thank you, council member. Um, so council member Newhouser, do you wanna, um, should we continue on with, with well, your document? Uh, Ariel's uh, at the controls here. So you'll have to scroll <laughs> a little bit. Some of this was already previously highlighted and I should have highlighted it a different color. I <laughs> didn't, didn't do that. It was already in yellow, but these two items, the educate the community were added in previously. And those were based on comments that Larry had made, um, Larry Davis had made in the last meeting. And I thought, oh, okay, well, at least we could, you know, provide information. We can be a conduit of information. Um, and, and that can be both educational and resources, um, services, et cetera. So that's, that, that's from previously, but if you keep scrolling, you'll see, I've added a few more um, and under the community, um, under the emergency preparedness, uh, I just thought that, you know, we could help people and I kind of made up an acronym here, this, you know, with making sure that everyone's a part of an emergency support network. Um, and, and we could actually do this exercise. We could have a subcommittee that actually figures out, make sure that people have a community so that they're part of a phone tree, they're, someone's making sure that people are getting out, especially people who are disabled or elderly, because um, it works in my neighborhood, man. We had, I had people calling me in the middle of the night and thank God they did. So, um, so anyway, that's just an idea. Um, wanted to throw that out there. Um, and then, then the other thing is to, I think that was there already there about the educate community on what training opportunities exist. So, and, and, you know, just a comment going back to the larger issue of picking and choosing goals. I think until we kind of populate these with, um, action items that are, that are exciting and help us to prioritize, uh, we won't really know which ones we want to choose. Um, you know, so I think they getting more ideas out there, even if they're bad ideas, you know, populate this document and then um, we can, we can really digest it and then, then hone in on really what we want to focus on. And I think that obviously certain things are going to rise to the top, you know, whether it's SDC <laughs> or uh, the fire preparedness. Um, so anyway. Carry on. I figure we'll just go through. You want me to go through all of them, or you want to just do it? You know, um, sure. Let's, bowl. let's Let just other digest. Time in. Hmm? Yeah, I'd say let's let's go ahead. Yeah, just plow through. Okay, bear with me. Um, so I I just added a little in the under community projects. This is um, actually I had a conversation with Councilman uh, a, a woman Dowling about this issue, and because there was a little confusion about. Um, uh, you know, who's doing the community projects. And I think there was a, a little concern that, that the uh, North Valley Mac was gonna be going out there and doing community you know, work days and projects and stuff. And, um, and I said, no, I, that wasn't really my vision. And I'm sorry if I gave that impression, but um, I think there are certain things that we could certainly do and be a you know, facilitator and a conduit um, for helping to develop and prioritize projects not necessarily implement them unless they fell into the category of a larger, you know, public works project that was more complex or required the county to actually um, implement it. So, so just going down the line here, um, I mean, we certainly can do the, the soliciting input from the community for community project needs and priorities and then make recommendations to the, the super county supervisor. Um, and then um, you know, focus, and I, this is just my little brain dump here of, of what we think we should do as far as helping ours to prioritize projects. And um, I think we would want to choose public projects that have a broad impact, affect the community quality of life, uh, are on public land or within the right of way, um, or can you, and can utilize community participation. And then to address that earlier point of who's gonna do what um, as far as the implementation, we can differentiate projects as community driven or as a county public works projects. 
projects that can be accomplished by community groups will receive assistance as needed by the North Valley MAC, such as research, county approvals, potential public funding sources, et cetera. Um, and then projects that require um, county oversight, such as public works projects and government contracts will be identified through public input and recommendations made by the North Valley MAC to the county supervisor. And that was just to kind of try and dissect what I think was a confusing issue in our last meeting and present a, a potential solution. Thank you, council member. Um, before we move on to your next thing. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's well done. I appreciate your, the, the thought that went into this and the experience behind it. And, um, and it occurred to me that, that maybe this goal should be community building, which would go beyond projects. Um, just a thought. Yeah. <laughs> the sky's the limit, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway, you can scroll down now, Ariel, unless other people want to comment, but yeah, I'm almost done. Um, and then under SDC transition, I really, you know, as we discussed earlier, um, this is kind of, uh, you know, one of those things where it's not really completely in our purview, um, but it's such a hot item. And I think that, again, we can be a conduit of information, um, and, you know, but we could also collectively put together our own input. Um, and as we do so, we can make sure we clear it with, uh, uh, Supervisor Gorin's office to make sure that we're not you know, exceeding our bounds and um, but uh, but we can provide that and we can also encourage the, the county to provide uh, input as well because we're again it goes back to community building like Arthur was saying you know it's it's kind of incumbent upon us to make sure that the information's out there just as you know Councilman and Cooper want to know how do you get this information well you know that people need that information and they don't necessarily know where to go. I think the Glen Allen Forum has been a great conduit and I think they will continue to be. And that's how I learned. But, um, but anyway, that, that's something then provide planning process updates to the community. Um, and then the last one was just the, on you know, safety and traffic issues. Um, I just put in there a little more specificity, you know, that we can, because uh, that was already there, the, you know, uh, con conduct community survey forum of problem locations, but we can then process that input and then develop recommendations based on that input. Um, and then on the last one, I mean, I, I don't know, this, this, I wish I put a little more thought into the last one after um, this, uh, Supervisor Gorin's climate change, climate change, climate change, uh, emphasis in her presentation. Um, yeah, maybe we need to put some thought into this, but I, these are my little pet projects, tree planting, riparian restoration. Um, but also I'd like to see us, you know, start to recognize the importance of preserving what we have. And that's a hard thing to do in the vegetation management for fire prevention. So I don't know, this, this <laughs> may not fly, but whatever. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Council Member Newhouse. <laughs> Anything to make uh, Council Member Dickey smile. <laughs> so I'm wondering, um, you know, the poll that I, oh, I guess I can actually edit it, but um, I heard that a uh, I heard Chair Dawson suggest changing community projects to community building, and Councilmember Newhouser seemed fine with that. And I saw Councilmember Dickey give a thumbs up. So I'm wondering, is that is that a change that you guys want to make, or do you want to do you want to wait? Um, um, I just I can change it. I, I like projects because okay. it it really is projects. It's not just about community building. And again, community building may be like our outreach plan. It's just kind of a given, you know, it's what we do. Okay. I don't know. That's a yeah, tough council one. member uh, Daly. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I, I agree with council member Neuhauser that the community building may be part of outreach. And I like community projects getting called out there because as um, an organization collecting community input and being able to hopefully influence the board of supervisors, 
you know, the things that we can't do as a community, just getting out there with a few people in a shovel that the, the county um, would, would need it to help us with. So I, I'd love to keep, uh, keep our leadership accountable with that, that community projects. And I think they would appreciate having some direction from, from our council on, you know, where, where should they be focusing community or county effort for improving our communities. One check. Any other comments on the um, goals and priorities? I'll, I'll share. Um, so I had a few people I sent out the, oh, sorry, Council Member Dickey. Uh, I would agree with those observations. I, I think they are distinct from each other. You know, uh, community building could be considered outreach. Projects are far more specific. So I, I can see that distinction being very different from each other and would encourage that we separate them. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm hearing um, that, that uh, there's Generally, people want to keep it as community projects. I'm, I'm personally fine with that. Um, you know, it, it will help build the community, but we don't have to necessarily call it out in that way. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, Council Member Cooper. Luckily, I, it seems to me that the, uh, the, no, the climate change issue is being addressed by so many. I'm sure everybody in this council is interested in it. Maybe that's such a broad thing that we as a committee may not want to attack that because there's so many people are involved in, in doing things. I'm just thinking maybe that's something that our committee might, may want to just let go to other people. Maybe that's a controversial comment, but it just, that's all. <clears throat> Thank you, council member and council member uh, Norda Morgan. Um, you know, I, honestly, I think this is everyone issue climate change thing that is that affects uh every aspect of all of our lives including every one of these platforms here um you know um it affects human health uh, which which affects the weather which affects you know fires floods droughts heat and we can see these effects in our community i mean you know we've been ravaged by fat fires and droughts and you know extreme heat and power outages so it, it's a little bit of the elephant in the room where um adopting climate change and and adopting this as a platform of ours um we are addressing everything that's on this agenda really i i think it's a really important thing and i don't think we can sort of sweep it under the rug i think it's it's a it's a really important issue that all of us need to work toward building solutions for and, and really to be aware of, that's just my opinion. I didn't mean to sweep it under the rug. I'm just saying that there's so much attention given it that the ability of our committee to be able to effectuate, I mean, like you said, everything, everything does address it. So I just- Well, no, everything doesn't address it. It addresses everything. That, there's a little bit of a difference there. Sorry, I mean- it, Yeah. It, feels to me like every one of these goals has its fingers in that is, is part of climate change. It seems like all these goals are to try to take on climate change broadly. I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm OK with it. I just want to bring that up. I, I do want to say one other thing. Yeah, Council Member uh, Daly. I agree with Council Member Nardo Morgan, and I also want to say that I, I appreciated, I mean, the climate change, when we think about it, it's, it's scary, it's huge. We, we know that it's impacting everything in our lives and, um, you know, brings a lot of uncertainty to the future of our planet. And I appreciated um, how Council Member Neuhauser put a little bit of specificity in the box of what, you know, what can we do? And, and it, it, it even if it starts with tree planting and identifying our heritage trees or you know things that that are concrete that we can we can really action on in the short term um would they think be really good for for our council to work on thank you council member and council member nardo morgan 
You know, I did want to say one other thing, um, and I don't know if this was an oversight, but you have in the bottom of the box at, with climate change that you wanted to reduce the carbon footprint and you're using the example of cooling centers, which I think might have been a, a mistake. I think cooling centers should be an emergency response because cooling centers do not <laughs> this carbon footprint in any way that actually enhance it. Um, and if you look at all the literature on cooling centers, it's usually handled through public health or emergency response. Um, so just something to think about. You might want to move that out of there, especially since you have reducing the carbon footprint. Thank you, Council Member uh, Morgan. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, I guess I see that as under adapt to climate change. You know, we're, we're going to I mean, we want to do what we can to minimize climate change, but but you know we're, I mean we're already adapting to climate change. So I guess I I see, you know I mean that the the moment for me was this past summer when it got up to 114 degrees at my house and I walked outside and I just felt like, you know this is this is getting hellish and I, I'm lucky I have a well insulated house, but you know somebody who doesn't might might need such a thing. I mean I think of, of cooling centers more as an urban thing, but there might be people in Glen Ellen that and Kenwood that that could use that, and especially if it's going to continue as it is. Um, I mean, I, I don't have anything against moving that to emergency preparedness, but that was my thinking of putting that under there. It's, a, it's an adaptation. Right, and I agree with you. I think it's really important, especially vulnerable populations, um, the poor and the elderly. Really, do it's so important. We need cooling centers. It's just. It's just they don't reduce carbon footprint. I don't care. I, I mean, I don't know how much you care about the efficacy of that statement, but I just wanted to point that out as all. Well. But I agree with you. We need that. We, they should be at least looked into. Yeah, I, I guess I, I see climate change is it's going to require both adaptation and and uh, reducing our carbon footprint. So they kind of to me they go hand in hand, but. Again, I don't have any problem with moving that up to uh, emergency preparedness if people want to do that. I um, just want I just want to hop in there and say that the um, the possible action steps are not set in stone at all. There are things that we're just uh, um, kind of as as Councilmember Newhouse are you know suggested some that really do help the discussion, but they're not. Um, the action steps are not what you guys are going to be adopting if you adopt anything. It's the goals themselves. And also that council um, member Eagles has had her hand up for a long time. Oh, sorry, council member <laughs> Eagles. Oh, no worries. Thank you, Chair Dawson. I'm thinking, has this been addressed already? But I'll, I'll try to make my point. So assuming that we're still going to look for some prioritization tonight, uh, I was just looking at you know the, what's on the screen now and we have traffic and safety and we have expand stock of housing and, and you all have very helpfully, you know, sort of started to flesh that out as example fleshing out to your to your point, Ariel. Um, started to flesh that out though, which is helpful to me. But what I'm wondering, the STC thing is still a bit of a mystery. Uh, not a mystery, still still a bit of a, a tricky one. And so I'm thinking, you know, can we overlay the STC or underlay it into traffic and safety issues, into affordable housing? You know, we don't want to lose its importance. We have all identified that's the, that's the big issue in the room, right? But is there a way that we as we look at this, we can incorporate that into other goals and weigh in where and how we can on this, you know, obviously somewhat to be determined. Um, so anyway, just something to consider, sort of an overlay uh, with the SDC where, um, on different goals where, it, where it's relevant. You know, I, I thought we might do the same for climate change, but as I heard you guys talk about it, I'm not sure if that's, if that's quite feasible, but anyway. Uh, I think you're having a hard time making a decision, so I won't exclude everything in there and then only have two things to vote on, right? And we're good. <laughs> but I know that's probably not advisable, so I'll leave it there. Thank you, Council Member. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I could imagine um, folding SDC under or leaving that up to those committees if we form a housing committee and a traffic committee. And then, you know, one of the one of the goal or one of the priorities, I'm sorry, one of the action steps might be to just stay abreast of the situation at SDC and, and um, you know, make comments and recommendations where possible. Like, yes, that's sort yeah, of what I was thinking. That, yeah. that makes sense to me. Um, yeah, Council Member uh, Nardo Morgan. Um, yeah, I agree with both, both of you. Um, I, I think once, um, 
the priorities start coming in for SDC and the actual plans, that it's going to take on a life of its own and it will be sort of part of everything that we are talking about here. Um, so yeah, I do, I do agree with that. Oh, and I did have a question for Ariel. I think it was Ariel that said, I wondered if she could just elaborate on this, that the North Valley MAC will not have any priority or have any voice on SDC issues or comments. Was, did I hear that right? So it's uncertain. I, I asked the folks who are smarter than I, um, and the idea of, for example, you writing a letter on letterhead, I can make you letterhead with the logo, it's not a big deal. So you writing a letter saying, as a North Valley Mac, um, we have these concerns or we have this input, which you would discuss in an open and public meeting. Um, that is, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying people have questions about whether because you um, are an advisory committee to the Board of Supervisors, um, so your input or advice or um, inter in interactions, I guess is the way to put it, with county staff or um, you know, state staff or whatever is supposed to go through the supervisor's office. So there have been examples of, of other MACs um, treating, so for example, like a subcommittee or an ad hoc, that then decides to go out and start writing letters to Congress advocating for something, that's not in your purview, right? You, you are not a conduit in yourself to um, state federal government um, even. So, so because the SDC project right now is a specific plan that's being run through Permit Sonoma and the state, it's not totally clear how you could do that. As individuals, you can obviously attend and give your input, but as a body that is essentially a part of the board, it's it's just, I'm not saying you can't, I'm saying that it's, it sounds simple, but um, it is not simple because nothing in government is simple. And that is both your, your uh, blessing and your burden as a Mac. Um, so that's about as well as I can explain it right now. And it's something I'm happy to continue to, to you know, get more clarity on. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. That helps quite a bit. Thanks, Ariel. Yeah. And it looks like Councilmember Newhauser also has his hand up. Am I uh, recognized, Chair Dawson? Yes, sorry. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I, I didn't want to make any assumptions here. Um, no, regarding that point, uh, I think this is uh, this goes back to, uh, to our previous meeting. Um, we were talking about you know choosing projects and deciding on actions. I, I think that that if we use the community input and even if go so far as to um, gathering enough to be able enough input to be able to call it data, uh, I think we can comfortably communicate that information to the powers that be. And so if we say, for example, got a lot of input from the community about why it's so important that housing developed uh, on the SDC property be of very low and low income housing and not necessarily um, market rate, um, then we could communicate that as the, you know, actual data that we collected as the North Valley Mac. And I think that I would hope rather than sending an appeal to the, um, to whomever, uh, we could at least present that data and to the county or the state with the county's permission that we could then um, do that. Now, and maybe Ariel, you could weigh in on that. Yeah, so it's, um... These are complex questions that lawyers answer and channeling a, a lawyer that I had a long conversation with today about a different act. Um, it's really hard to weigh in on hypotheticals, right? And I understand your question, Council Member Newhouse, that like in this hypothetical, why would you want to go out doing all this work to gather the data if you couldn't do this, right? And so, um, but I, I, yes, I think that collecting feedback from the community and passing that, I, I feel like that's okay. But in, uh, again, until there's a proposal and what I would do, I'm not the authority here, right? I would take whatever the proposal is 
and run it through our county council and we would compare it to the bylaws and the the you know the policies of, of what Macs can do. It's not a special rule that we made up for the North Valley Mac. It's the way that all of the Macs are run in the county and they're and it's kind of new. We haven't had Macs for that long. And so as these issues come up, we have to work them out. Um, but um, I mean, yes, I, there's an argument to be made, as I guess what I'll say, and that I can't really say definitively about a hypothetical. And I'm sorry that that's not that satisfying. Well, it's a chicken and egg thing, then we kind of need to know if we're going to make that a, a, a goal and a uh, action item. So I guess, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you and Chair Dawson to figure that out. Well, how, how do people feel about, um, you know, we talked about folding SDC under housing and under traffic and safety. How would people feel if we took took it off of our um, off of our goal list and and just, you know, assume that they would be addressed under those those goals, and uh, trust the ad hoc committees to keep that in mind. Yeah, Council Member Dickey. I think we kind of have to, in the sense that um, there's nothing specific that's been generated that we could react to. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously we cannot ignore what's going to happen there. Um, but we can't react to something that's a virtual unknown either at this point. So. <laughs> However, we can term it in a general sense so that we can react to it in the future is probably our best opportunity to, to establish it as a, if nothing else, as a characteristic for our deliberations. Um, because I, I mean, I'll be honest, what is this Mac even representing? if we don't have some possibility of communicating our community's feelings about whatever plan is proposed at SDC. I mean, we're not, well, it's, it's, a, it's a virtual non sequitur, <laughs> you know, uh, for us not to have the opportunity to address it, but, on the other hand, chicken and the egg. There's nothing that's been specifically uh, proposed yet that we could react to. So uh, I think we we just owe it to ourselves to be able to, to acknowledge that we're going to react to this. I mean, we're going to. Well, there's, there's not going to be an option to it because otherwise the community is going to look at us and go, well, what do you guys, honestly, um, so, you know, however it turns out in the long run, uh, in terms of the, the legal implications of what we decide later, we want to give ourselves as much flexibility about that very specific thing as possible, I think. Thank you, Council Member Dickey. Council Member Nara Morgan. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I think that um, SDC can easily be embedded into the other platform that you suggested. And, you know, this is an agenda. And as Councilman Dickey said, we are, you know, we're the voice. We need to listen to what the public wants. And as an agenda, it should have some, you know, some type of fluidity to it so that if SDC does become a bigger priority, then it becomes more of a priority for us. That's just how we work. We are, you know, mm -hmm. we are a reflection of the community that, you know, um, is working with us. So yes, I, I think it can easily be shifted into that. So would anyone, uh, thank you, Council Member Nardo Morgan. Um, would anyone object to us uh, taking it off as a goal and, and then folding it into the other goals. So we won't, so that we, do, we wouldn't vote on SDC, but we would assume it's gonna be covered in the future uh, as council members Dickey and uh, Morgan have been talking about. It looks like a council member Handron also has her hand up as well. Uh, yeah, council member Handron. 
Yeah, I actually don't have very much to add, except um, I have no objections to answer your question. I think that that we have to use the tools that we have and that we've been given. And and I agree, it's it's an absolute necessity that we're going to talk about these issues. It's just how we frame them, and that if we frame them in that under the the areas that we have authority, like traffic and housing and all these things, then then our voice is stronger and and is more meaningful. Thank you. Yeah, good point. So, um, so it sounds like we, yeah, Council Member Newhazer. Uh, yeah, I think quality of life is um, is something that we can address, and I think that any way that a very, very significant development occurs in our town will affect quality of life on many levels, not just traffic and um, and housing and um, and also let's let's remember the cautionary tale of. Uh, our caller, our concerned citizen uh, about development and how once it's done, it's too late. And, and if we wait to react to a plan that's already been, to, been fully vetted, um, by the time we get a chance to react to it, it may be too late. And so I, I do think that we need to be a conduit of input and collecting that input and communicating it. And um, I think that our outreach is gonna be key to gathering information and making sure that the, that the community's voices are heard as we transmit that information upward. Thanks. Thank you, Council Member Neuhauser. Um, if there's no further comments from the council, I'd like to uh, give the public an opportunity to comment, but if there are, but we can hold off a few minutes if there are any more comments. Okay. It looks, like, uh, it looks like Vice Chair Doss has his hand raised. Okay, yeah, Vice Chair Doss. So very quickly, just where would you integrate the uh, SDC into? Which goal would it become a uh, obje uh, objective of that goal? Which one were you looking at? I was, I was thinking of both affordable housing and traffic. Thank you. So um, uh, for anyone in attendance, uh, this is an opportunity to comment on uh, the discussion so far on our goals and priorities. Uh, if anyone would like to speak, uh, please raise your hand and we'll unmute you. If you don't mind, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because there are too many tiny windows um, on. Okay. Yeah. That was too much. Okay. okay. Um, so Larry, oh, it, looks, it looks like a uh, council member Handron has her hand up before we go to. Uh, okay. Talk. Yes. Council member Handron. Yeah, I, I think that the, the issues of the SDC can be incorporated into every single goal. I don't think it should be limited to just a couple. Agreed. Yeah. No, I see no problem with that. We'll just see what's, what comes down the pike, you know. <laughs> uh, um, okay, it looks like we have uh, Larry Davis is raising his hand. Um, Chair Dawson, uh, do you have a suggested time limit for public comment? Um, let's give people, um, we'll, we'll do two minutes again. Okay. Um, so Larry, you should see a prompt. Um, hold on, bear with me while I actually do share my screen with the timer. Okay. And then where'd Larry go? Okay. Um, it looks like you can talk now. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. I, I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. Um, All right. There. How about Thanks. that? Perfect. Does that work? Okay. I was going to support what Vicki says that uh, <clears throat> if you look at your sphere of influence as a governmental body and you include it in incorporating the SDC and Kenwood and Ken and Glen Ellen and the spheres of influence up Sonoma Mountain and just look at this whole larger community made up of smaller communities and smaller neighborhoods, then all of these issues are going to flood all of those uh, circumstances and all those conditions. So 
I'm looking at it as a community development professional in the sense that they gave me a, a doctorate in it. So I suppose I'm supposed to know something about it. Uh, I don't think I know very much about it, except that it's really hard to separate out one piece of it from the rest of it. It's all connected and it's impossible, even though we have a plan now for Sonoma Mountain uh, Park that seems to act as if it's not connected to the SDC, we know that the animals and the people are gonna go from the SDC up to Sonoma Mountain Park and back again. And we have to take that into effect when we're trying to figure out what the plans should be. So I'm saying wherever we start, these groups or ad hoc committees or outreaches are going to run into each other because the nature of the beast, the nature of the sphere of influence, so to speak, that the MAC is taking responsibility for is the quality of life of the people and the animals and the environment in which we're living. So I think we can relax about cutting it too, too, too uh, carefully, but I think that you're wise in th thinking that you don't have to deal with the SDC plan. You can deal with the, the communities and the community qualities and categories, and it'll take care of itself. End of comment. All right, thank you, Larry. Good point, yeah, everything's connected. Yes, Council Member Morgan. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, Larry. Well, that kind of broke up, but I think you just said thank you, Larry. Is that basically? I said, well, yeah, well, well said, well said. Yeah, yeah. all right, yeah. And I'm, uh, oh, and we have Catherine. So Catherine with a K, um, you should see a prompt to, there you go. Hi hey everyone, thank you for uh, doing your interview. I want to highlight that as I'm hearing you, there seems to be a lot of overlap with what's already being done with the Glen Ellen Forum. And uh, it would take for all of you to and you know, reinventing the wheel. So we wanted to make sure that that, you know, like the traffic and safety committee and there's also community projects. So we really kind of identifying what, what is the map truly in its relationship between community and, and working with um, government officials. And then while I'm here too, I really want to highlight that I don't see anywhere in these objectives um, anything related to sustainability is very important and then um, thank you Ari for bringing us up the wood animal we really need to bring in the wildlife and everything we're doing right now is very human centric and I really would like to see a lot more focus on ecology and wilderness preservation and protection. Thank you. Thank you Catherine. Um, it was a little, little uh, the volume was kind of low. I, I um, I don't think I got your whole message, but I heard that you uh, want to see sustainability um, woven into our goals, and um, and I also heard about overlap with the um, the forum, and it's true there is there is overlap, uh, but the intention of well, two things about the MAC: one is it covers a larger area than the forum; it goes up into Kenwood, so it's it's a bigger community, and um, and. You know, we're dedicated to working with existing organizations. We're not trying to take over anybody's territory. We're, we're <laughs> hoping to be the conduit between the community and the county, the direct conduit, since we're, we are part of the county government. Um, and we're lucky enough to have um, Council Member Dowling, who's the president of the, uh, the Glen Ellen Forum um, nonprofit. So I I think we're well set up to work with the forum, uh, but maybe I'll leave that to Council Member Dowling if you want to make any further comments on that. And I, I just want to jump in there and say, Catherine, if you want to send um, an email to me of your comment, um, it sounds like people got the gist, but um, I can distribute it to all of the MAC members um, after, after the meeting. And I appreciate your engagement, Catherine. And thanks for your thanks for your comments. And um, yeah, we'll, we're we're certainly all want to do what we can to keep this a, a good place to live. Any other um, public comments? 
I am not seeing any um, other hands raised. Um, so uh, should we go into the poll? Sure. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Council Member Dickey, thumbs up that. Um, okay. So uh, let me can, let me make one comment before one suggestion. Since we've um, from our conversation, it sounds like we're we're taking the SDC specific uh, goal out of out of the mix. And it sounds like we've decided that outreach is sort of automatically an ad hoc committee. Does anybody disagree with those two things? And I actually um, took the liberty of editing the poll while you are all were talking. So you're not going to see the uh, SDC option. Um, I also just want to say it doesn't sound like we added any goals here tonight, um, but I had prepared for that to happen. So the last three options are additional one, goal one, additional goal two, and additional goal three. We don't have those, so please do not select those options. Okay. Um, Thank you, Ariel. You're, you're on top of it. Um, so should people, um, I'm just thinking about the logistics here. Uh, should people even vote for outreach or if we're all agreed, we just assume that's in and then uh, we were going to vote for four and pick the top three as our ad hoc committees. Should we should we vote for three and take the top two as the ad hocs in addition to outreach ad hoc? Okay, I'm, I'm going to launch. I'm going to launch it. Um, and uh, yeah, if uh, however Chair Dawson wants to do it, if you want to just vote for two then um, or vote for three and take the top two. Can you and clarify I, that, Chair? Yeah, that sounds that sounds right. Um, so I guess the one other thing I wanted to run by the council was was um, it's it's my feeling that we sh should probably not try to have more than three ad hoc committees. It's it's too much uh, for us to take on. The three seems like about the right number. And if we if we try to do too much, we're going to be less effective. Uh, does anybody either think that three is too few or too many? <clears throat> Okay, I guess three, three it is. Okay, so so the way this I, I is do going. Actually, I, do, I, I do actually have something to add based on a conversation I had today, which I had forgotten about. And I just want to put this out here before we create any ad hocs. Um, you should create the ad hocs, but ad hocs are able to do what they do, which is, you know, to meet and talk to each other and outreach the community and do all this stuff because they're time limited. So ad hoc committees um, can only really exist for about a year. You can extend it slightly if you're working on something. Um, much longer than that, it becomes a standing committee. Um, and a standing committee is subject to the Brown Act. So that would mean that you would need public noticing requirements and public meetings and things like that. And so the, the goal of ad hoc committees is to get work done um, quickly and then launch it back to the MAC and then sort of dissolve and have it be taken up by the MAC as a whole. So I just, um, I'm sorry I sprung that on you. I, I learned that after I had met with Chair Dawson and Vice Chair Dawson this morning. It doesn't really change this. It just kind of changes kind of, you're not gonna be on the ad hoc for you know the next three years. It's, it's to, to, to do a purpose um, and then to dissolve and then um, you know, a liaison or the MAC in general will take on that, that role. All right. Thanks, Ariel. That's that's good. Yeah, good to know that. And and I assume we could um, we could form new ad hocs under different you know with different uh, purviews as time goes on. Definitely. As yeah. Things change. Yeah. yeah. So it, well, that that will allow us to work with the times, and it's kind of good. It gives us a deadline. Then you know whatever we're going to do, we got to do in about a year. Which I, I personally. Um, and uh, one. One last comment before I launch the poll and, and then what, whatever Chair Dawson was gonna say, but for all the attendees, I am not sure if this poll is gonna show up and allow you to vote on it or not. Please don't vote on it. It's for the membership of the MAC. Um, thank you. But I appreciate all the, the public comment and certainly we're you know, taking all that into account. So we'll, we'll go to the poll. So vote for your, your three uh, top goals um, and 
and the outreach plan we're not going to worry about so because we're going to do that we're already doing that so vote on three besides the outreach plan Aria, where do I click? I'm not, nothing seems to be happening. I, I couldn't tell you, Chair, because I only see the administrator's view of it. So um, other people are clicking. I see people clicking, so. I, I clicked on, on one and nothing happened for a while and then it, and then something showed up but I couldn't tell if it was my click. Oh, it's, it's because you're um, a co-host. That's why I can, I can, um, I will make you not a co-host and then you can do it. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now I see what we're doing. Okay. So we're all submitting three choices. And then we'll take the top two of those three, whatever you voted for. We're gonna, we're gonna see which ones come out on top. And if there's a tie, we can do a, a runoff election, runoff vote. And it does look like, oh, what would that be? Three, so it looks like 10 people voted and there should only be nine people voting. I, this is this is the first test of this, you know, so um, bear with us all. Um, and it looks like at least uh, th uh, three people voted for the develop outreach plan. Um, so I mean, I can end it and we can read we can redo it. Um, does that sound good? Yeah, how about let's Let's redo it and vote for four and just include the outreach plan. How's okay. that? Hey, do alternatives, do alternates uh, vote? Maybe I'm not supposed yeah. to. No, alternates should vote. So, oh, um, okay. uh, but we did have 10 votes. So I think some member of the public was trying to be sneaky. Um, please don't, <laughs> please, uh, please allow the, the membership. This is essentially the, um, you know, putting up big sticky notes and allowing the, the members of the MAC to put their colored dots on the different goals. So, um, you know, I'm gonna relaunch it. Um, so everyone vote for outreach plan and three others. Okay. Thank you, yeah, perfect. <clears throat> All right, it looks like we have nine votes. Is everyone finished? Speak up if you're not finished. Okay, um, and now I'm gonna share the results and I think everyone sees it on their screen. I'm not sure, I'm very new at this. Here we go. So it's looking like the the, uh, the top three, including outreach, are um, outreach, emergency preparedness, and traffic and safety. With uh, affordable housing, a, a close fourth, but, and then other things are, are quite a bit further back. So, you know, maybe as, as SDC goes along, if, you know, at some point we may say we want to have an ad hoc committee on affordable housing because it's going to tie into SDC. We could, we could form that then if we want. Um, okay, well, it 
I think are we? Uh, I think we got it. <laughs> anybody have any final comments or disagreements about what was just decided, or uh, uncomfortable with what was decided, or whatever, or or gleeful about what was decided? <laughs> If you do want to adopt these, um, oh, it looks like uh, Councilmember Newhouser has his hand up. Yeah, um, Councilmember Newhouser. I, I'm just curious. Um, I'd like to hear from folks why um, traffic and safety rose to the top. Uh, well, for me, that, Mark? go ahead, uh, Vice Chair Das. I was asking if uh, uh, Mark could restate his question. Oh, just just why uh, traffic and safety was at, at the top? I, I for some reason it didn't occur to me that that would be a high a higher priority than say like housing. So I, I was just curious if people could say why they you know th thought that that was so important because it was such a high vote getter. Well, I as I will answer for myself. I did vote for that. Uh, didn't vote it necessarily to be the highest, but I did vote for that because in Kenwood that's a big issue. Uh, evacuation, traffic and safety, getting out in fires, and and that is a major issue in the community, both in Kenwood and Oakmont, and in the hills between Glen Ellen and Kenwood. Okay, I thought that was under the fire preparedness, though. Mm, I I don't think I, that's not how I how I saw it. So I guess. Let's see. I'd have to look at the poll again, but. I, I would jump in there and say that I'm, I'm fairly new to any of this, but being on this committee and talking to people, letting them know that I'm on the committee, traffic is probably the number one thing that I hear about. I, there's young families that moved into our area that I've spoken with the, um, the parents and they, they they had concern about traffic lights and they had questions about them I couldn't answer. And uh, so I, I see it as just trying to, I just spoke for what I, people have talked to me about. Thank you, Council Member Cooper. Uh, Council Member Dickey. I prioritized it also. Um, and I, I did so because I think just traveling through the center of town hits it's our only way in and out of town. And the, the, the speed of traffic, the density of it, um, traffic mitigation efforts, you know, the quality of the bridges that connect the center of town on either the north or the south are all really important questions. You could say that they do overlap with emergency preparedness, but they're also standalone items. And uh, so that's why I was concerned. I also hear a lot about traffic, a mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. Council member Eagles and then Dally. Sorry, uh, yes, also the, the, the NADCON within our purview as a MAC to STC issues, I think traffic. We also had bike paths uh, and bike access and, and, and in that category, we had a bullet point there. So I think that falls into that. You know, I too hear a lot about traffic. I live right off of Madrone, of Madrone Road. So yeah, I think from Kenwood down to the southern end of the border, things were why I put the priority was. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilmember Eagles. We broke up a little bit at the end, but I think we got your point. Um, Councilmember Daly. I also, um, I saw traffic and safety as um, pedestrian and cyclist safety. And, you know, I, I put a lot of thought into it and I feel like as a new group and a new organization that potentially um, safety for cyclists and pedestrians and addressing specific traffic issues in both Glen Ellen and Kenwood is, is something potentially we can, we can accomplish in the next year. Um, I think that affordable housing is something on everyone's mind. I have a lot of hope for the SDC and the solutions that are proposed there that will, will really help to make some, some very dramatic and positive change in that area. Um, but for, for our committee, I, I saw traffic and safety as a, as a choice for right this moment as, as something that was a little higher priority for me. Thank you, Councilmember Dowling. Councilmember Morgan. Um, yeah, I, I kind of had the same thought as Melissa. 
versa. It just seemed like something we could really get our teeth into and really uh, be productive with. And, you know, to me, it's a little bit connected. It's connected to climate change in that the bicycle pass, and we really need to create sustainable, livable, walkable cities and areas where we live. And it just seemed, and you know, everyone is concerned about traffic that I talk to. So that was one of the reasons I chose it. Thank you, Council Member Morgan and Council Member Handren. Yeah, I, I chose uh, traffic and safety because they're both really broad to me. And I thought that they could pull in um, some issues that were especially climate change issues that were raised in some other goals that we could incorporate those into traffic and safety. All right, thank you. Council Member Daly. Um, also just came to mind, um, traffic and safety is a committee within the Glen Ellen Forum that is currently dormant. So it's a topic that is very interesting and important to everyone, but not enough for, um, for anyone to uh, volunteer to chair that committee. So I guess selfishly, I felt that we have this group of very capable people here that could, could give some attention to that very important issue. <laughs> All right, thanks. And uh, for me personally, um, I voted for traffic and safety, um, partly because I, you know, I, I have an office in downtown Glen Ellen and I'm a, just aware of the safety issues of crossing the street um, in downtown Glen Ellen. Um, I also, you know, the, the bike path is near and dear to my heart. So that's, that's another thing that I, I really like. And, um, and also I, th I think, um, you know, this is an opportunity, like I think um, council member Handron mentioned this or somebody mentioned sort of we can sink our teeth into it. And the, I mean, the county has resources to put toward uh, projects that we could, you know, if, if we can promote some of these things, um, you know, things could actually happen. You know, Department of Public Works could get involved and, you know, help us put together a bikeway or, or do a better crosswalk situation in downtown Glen Ellen or, or build an overpass in downtown Kenwood so you can go over to the church without crossing the highway. Just kidding. But uh, um, anyway, that's, that was my thinking. Um, any other comments on our on our uh, goals that we've set? The outreach plan, emergency preparedness, and traffic and safety. Okay, um, I think we can move on now to reports and announcements from uh, council. Members. Hold on, Terry Dawson. So, if you want this to be official, um, you're going to need to do a vote that those are the top. Uh, okay. the, the, the three priorities. And if you want to assign ad hocs tonight, you can do that. Um, or if you want to ask for volunteers, or we can save that and have a quick item at the next meeting, the first meeting in January and, and create the ad hocs then. Um, uh, whatever. And it, it look, I've seen some enthusiastic nod nodding, but you are, you are chair. So um, that is up to you. But we should vote on the priority goals or we can hold off the whole vote till next time, but since everyone seems to be agree with it, I feel like we should vote for on them now. Yeah, and I, I, I feel like we should vote, but then hold off the uh, assignment of ad hoc committee till January. It'll be a good way to start the year and, and, um, and we'll all be ready to take on new stuff. Um, all right, would someone um, raise a motion to accept uh, outreach traffic and safety and uh, emergency preparedness as our three goals for the coming year or the coming, I don't know, do we need to say coming year or can we just say, or I guess for the immediate future, how's that? Whatever that means. Um, so if someone will, will make a motion. So move. And I hear a second. Second. Okay. All in favor of making uh, those three goals our, our goals for the coming year, um, say aye. 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 And all those opposed? All right, approved that those will be our three goals for the coming year, more or less. And, um, and, then, um, and then we will um, we'll assign, actually what I, what I think would be great for people to do over the between now and the next meeting is just think about which ad hoc you'd be willing to serve on. Um, so we have three ad hocs, we have nine members, so th 
three of us uh, can serve on, we could have three on each ad hoc. Um, I haven't, let's see, I'm just trying to think if that if that's work, if that's easily workable or if we should do something a little, a little fancy. Also, you can also do, um, you can also have an ad hoc with two. You just can't mm -hmm. have more than three. Yeah. Could we have a, an ad hoc with uh, three members and one alternate member? No, the alternate member counts as a member of the ad hoc. So okay. the only difference with alternates is that they don't, their votes don't count unless someone's absent. But yeah. they can serve on the committees and they can engage in all the discussions and they can vote in the straw polls. Um, uh -huh. So um, an, an alternate counts as a member in a, in a ad hoc. Okay. So yeah, we're ideally we have three people on each ad hoc and um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So think about where you'd like to serve and we'll, we'll um, discuss and hopefully assign uh, ad hoc memberships next time with, uh, with the free park point pass. Sorry, no, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I think we're ready now. Thanks for keeping me on track here, Ariel. Um, so now we're ready for reports and announcements from council members. Um, and the, the one I'd like to add that's not on the agenda, uh, but I, it would make sense to me if uh, Vice Chair Doss and uh, uh, Chair Member Newhauser wanted, would like to speak about the vegetation management meeting that they went to, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think we, we would all be interested in hearing about that. And this, this goes back to what Susan was talking about, the money from PG&E uh, that, that will be used for veg management. So um, Council Member Dickey, take it away with the uh, Citizens Advisory Council uh, update for us. In a video he posted on his Twitter and Facebook. Sorry? Last week, President Trump once again claimed that last month's presidential election was rigged. Here to talk about. It. <laughs> 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 it's rigged. Are we, getting zoom bombed? Are we getting zoom bombed here? Is that count as a hack? I don't know. Yeah, it's a hack. We've been hacked. <laughs> um, we've had two uh, uh, CAC meetings since our pre our last uh, Glen Ellen Mac meeting, North Valley Mac meeting, on the eighteenth. We uh, reviewed a presentation for um, um, a, uh, a permit modification for a pavilion, a tasting room pavilion out on the south end of the Sonoma Valley at Donham Estates. Uh, we approved it. Um, and then our second item was um, to receive and review winery event guidelines. Um, we decided to form an ad hoc committee to review what they proposed to us. Uh, I'm on that committee uh, and I invite anybody here to send me comments. Uh, and if you're interested, I can send you the guidelines. It's roughly 14 pages. Um, and I was the one that proposed that we form an ad hoc committee because I have some concerns about um, some of the characteristics of their guidelines. The meeting last Wednesday uh, was, um, we had two items. Um, one of them was a presentation from the planning department and you know, Sonoma County Planning Department for, um, uh, I'm getting my notes out here, sorry, if I'm seeming distracted. Um, so we had a meeting um, for rezoning sites throughout the county. Um, every 10 years, sites have to be proposed for affordable housing availability. Not to say that they're going to be constructed or that um, they 
uh, will be approved, but all counties throughout the state in order to receive HUD funding for their housing projects have to propose um, housing sites that were not previously identified to uh, as possibilities to meet the affordable housing requirements. Um, one of those projects was identified in Glen Ellen. It's not to say that he's uh, Mr. Winter's project or property at the corner of Carquinas and Arnold Drive was identified as one of those potential affordable housing sites. He has not proposed to build that kind of um, project development there, um, but it was identified by the county as a site that would potentially meet their criteria. Um, and then the second item that we um, met regarded, regarded a senior housing, affordable housing project on Siesta Way, which is across the street from what it used to be the, uh, the movie theater in the Fiesta Market uh, shopping center. Um, it's 92 units. We approved it unanimously. Um, and they expect to break ground on it uh, middle of next year. All right, thank you, Council Member Dickey. And, um, and by the way, there will be an opportunity for um, public comment after all the uh, announcements of, of uh, Council Members. Um, and um, but I also should just, just remind people this isn't really meant to be a, uh, this is just informational. It's not meant to be a discussion or a deliberation. Uh, if we really wanna do that, we have to put it on the agenda. Um, okay, um, council member Dowling uh, will fill us in on the uh, updates for the Glen Ellen Forum. Um, thank you, Chair Dawson. Um, I actually forgot to formally prepare my, rem my remarks for today and I was just struggling. It's like, what have we been doing? And then I remembered, oh yeah, we lit the bridge. So that was uh, pretty hard. There's like visual, if you can see my photo that was taken at about 4.40 today. Um, so we were, we were very excited to get a lot of community support and um, many, many donations and uh, had to call uh, some, some of our uh, elected officials to help us cut through some last minute red tape. And uh, we were we were able to do that. Our um, our meeting for December, there was a lot of emphasis on uh, the SDC and uh, Alice Horowitz earlier during public comment shared a lot of the discussion items that had been presented in the last meeting. Um, traditionally, or at least for the last year, the December Glen Ellen Forum meeting has been focused on fun and community building and with a very light agenda. Um, so on, in our Zoom meeting, we had uh, you know, a lot of uh, comments of appreciation for our community and, uh, and then a couple of performances of original songs about Glen Ellen that was a little bit fun. So there's a little musical interlude. I'm not sure we'll ever have a musical interlude during a Mac meeting, but you know, maybe. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> um, if, any, if any of the public wants to do a song during their, their two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Challenge accepted. So that's it. And we also we, we do not um, have a Glen Ellen Forum meeting in January. So we, we take January off. And so the next meeting will be February 1st. And the information about that will be up on our website within the next couple of days. Make a note. All right. Thank you, Council Member Daly. And, and now um, Council Members uh, Vice Chair Doss and Council Member Neuhauser. Um, yeah, if you guys want to sort of present together or back and forth or one or the other, it doesn't matter to me. I'll do a very brief introduction because uh, Council Member Newhouser had most of the information and he did an excellent presentation. There were about 20 plus people from about eight to nine agencies, quite a few agencies from far West County, Sea Ranch area and that that's area in that regard, in addition to ourselves. Uh, from the North Valley, there was a representative from the Mayakamas Fire and an individual from Glen Ellen who I don't know, but Mark may know uh, who she was. Um, we did uh, vegetation management, um, wildfire preparedness, house hardening, fuel reduction, 
Uh, for me, the thing I learned that I had never heard of before was something called a air curtain burner that was uh, seemed to be highly favored by the Mayakamas people up on Trinity and also the person from Glen Ellen knew quite a bit about it. It's for really taking care of larger vegetation, not just what you would get in a chipper, but much larger trees, etc., that might need to be uh, eliminated due to being burned or or disease. And so it was a, it was a good meeting. Um, very strong advocacy for some a good portion of that 25 million by West County uh, very uh, for at this meeting. Um, and Mark had a lot of good comments. So I'm going to turn it over to him if I could. Well, I can't remember a damn thing I said. No. <laughs> well, you were uh, quite uh, quite uh, pervasive about uh, house hardening, home hardening, et cetera, and, and just how things like how we're going to do that. And we talked a little bit about in Kenwood, we've been going uh, on contract with the county of Sonoma house to house by uniformed uh, fire officers checking each house. That's what we're doing this year. Last year, we focused on Highway 12 down Warm Springs to the end of the um, uh, Kenwood Fire Protection District line, uh, stopping at each home uh, and, and residents along Warm Springs and inspecting their property and giving them a report and coming back in 30 days and seeing if they had done anything about it. So that's kind of what we've been doing locally, but uh, the concepts really were in the West County they're really worried about their roads and one-way roads um, going in and out are very one lane, almost one lane roads going into some of those hills. And they want that money spent on county road um, management, not the, not the potholes, not the paving, but the, the brush and trees and overhang uh, that they see as being endangering them should they get caught in the hills there during a fire. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks for uh, recalling um, so much that was was shared by others. I was really impressed with the uh, quality of the comments from folks in the West County and even here locally and how organized they are and and uh, and how broad their perspective is. And, and you know, I, I always do my little Don Quixote impersonation where I'm like, like, you know, calling for balance and, and to, you know, save as much of nature as we can because, you know, we're losing so much to the overzealous clearing of vegetation that it, as an ecologist, I've been um, really suffering from um, post fire and post fire, you know, um, reaction of trauma because uh, I see so much being lost. So, you know, saying that, uh, we got, when I did my, my plea, people were really responding. With, they were very environmentally conscious folks. They were really looking into um, the, um, how to do this work in a sustainable way. And um, there was a couple of county folks on the line. There was a gal who uh, was, I think, with the county council's office, is that right? I believe so. Yes. Uh, yeah, and 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 I I I I read through the strategic plan because that meeting's coming up soon. Um, the st strategic planning meeting for the county, and I they had flood prevention listed, but they didn't have fire prevention as a part of their strategic planning process. And and I I said, well, I think that the vegetation management should be addressed within the. Um, uh, you know, within the context of the strategic planning for the county. And, and they acknowledged that they had gotten a lot of those comments and that they were going to amend the strategic planning process to include um, fire emergency planning and prevention. Uh, so that was reassuring. Um, but uh, I, 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 one realization I had from this whole process was that everybody wants a little piece of this you know, one-time money, you know, even though it's 25 million, I know that doesn't go real far and as, as uh, Supervisor Gorin said. And um, it occurred to me that, that probably the best way to spend this money is really on capacity building 
And um, yeah, we're going to have to do some on the ground work to satisfy folks. Um, so I actually kind of took it upon myself to um, write up some basic principles to guide this process, hopefully within the strategic planning process, but also just in this little 25 million um, allocation for vegetation management and to hope to influence that process because it's like what um, Vice Chair Dawes said, uh, that, you know, there, other people mentioned house hardening, but if we're just going to spend the money on vegetation management, we're not really addressing the other half of the problem. And um, they, 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 I think the county council or the other, uh, the, the gal from the county who was chairing the meeting said that, oh yeah, we have grants in the pipeline. Well, grants in the pipeline are really different from cash in hand. So I'm, I'm anyway, I, long story short, I'm hoping to, with some further feedback, um, it, to help influence that process so that they have a more balanced approach. Um, but it was, it was not a large group. How many people? It was only like 10 people on the call, um, as I recall. Well, I think there were more than that, but, but it wasn't over 20, that's for sure. Maybe 16 or something like that. Yeah. That's true. There were several people who were on the phone as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Newhauser and uh, Councilmember Das. And um, I was wondering, um, Councilmember Handron, if you wanted to, you've been attending the uh, the um, Latinx. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the name, but COVID uh, Latinx uh, meetings every weekly or biweekly. Yes, every Friday morning, the Sonoma Valley Latinx COVID outreach, I think is. Oh, that is like a mouthful. That. Okay, I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so there, the discussion um, is increasingly focused on, um, well, obviously addressing COVID, especially in the, the Latinx population because they are disproportionately affected. And um, Supervisor Gorin kind of reported a lot on what was talked about mostly there's going to be, they're working on an increase in testing. Um, right now there's testing in the springs on Mondays and they're looking to expand that to St. Leo's, I think on Wednesdays. A lot of concern about especially in law of mission and I'm afraid you're breaking up on my end. I don't know if anybody else is. Oh, it is a uh, uh, council member Handron breaking up for other people. Yes. I, yeah. I'll oh. Keep. Think she's maybe, oh, maybe sorry. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so just a lot of concern that, that there's going to be a lot. There already is, and. Oh, uh, shoot. <laughs> oh, do we, there she is. I, th I think we, we lost all the I'll last audio. Again. Okay, so the discussion about and concern over financial hardship faced in the community and how it concerned that it's going to get worse. So there's a group getting together. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I, I can hear. It's better now. Okay, so there's a group getting together to assist tenants facing evictions and um, increased testing and to do what we can to help people. But there's, there's real dire need in our community right now. And, and we're Uh oh, I think we lost you completely. Oh, there you are again. <laughs> I think you got the gist of what I was saying. I think you did, yeah. Do, do you have a sense of, um, you know, how, uh, you know, how impacted the um, the Latinx community in in the MAC area is? I mean, I'm sure it's similar, but um, any any more specific to our MAC zone? Um, I don't have specific 
hard information on that, but I can tell you just based on meal deliveries, I know that there's a lot of meal deliveries through the schools and through Food for All um, that I, I, members of our community, uh, people in our community are being served by food deliveries. I know that for sure. Um, uh -huh. I'm, I'm trying to um, talk to the managers of the apartments and see if there's a way that they communicate with their, um, their tenants to see if we can maybe open up some channels of communication that way. Oh, that's great. All right, thank you, Council Member Handron. Um, so now is an opportunity if anyone in the public, uh, if you raise your hand, if you'd like to make any, any comments on the, on the recent discussions, or the, well, not discussions, but the recent uh, announcements and information from council members. So this is an opportunity. I'm not seeing any hands. Okay, and then we can move on. Uh, so we're down to the second to last item, which is consideration of items for a future agenda. Um, and my chair notes warn me to make sure it doesn't become a discussion or deliberation. So just keep this to just suggestions. Um, so I, I mean, I think obviously we already know we're going to be um, setting up the ad hocs. Are there any, um, beyond that, are there any pressing issues in the MAC zone that, that seem like they should be addressed? Okay, well, I've, yeah, I, I can't think of anything myself. Um, we do also so. have a, I, I have a running list um, that I, I have it if you'd like to see it, it's not pretty. But um, there, you guys already do have a, a number of um, future agenda items. So yeah. don't worry, you're not failing because <laughs> you can't come up with any right this moment. You have a lot. <laughs> you know, it's been a long year, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, well, do, if anybody wants to see that list, otherwise, um, when uh, Vice Chair Das and Ariel and I get together to create the next agenda, we can... Uh, we can take a look at it and, and um, you know, put a couple of those ideas, those things in if, if we think they're, they're relevant at that moment. Okay, uh, I'm, that's easy. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with that if, if you guys are good with that. Um, yeah, we are getting toward the end of a two and a half hours, so uh, my brain is getting a little mushy too. So. <laughs> You just can't see the glaze in my eyes. It's just, you know, that's, I turn into a mountain when I get, get tired. Um, okay, so we just need a, uh, someone to propose a motion to adjourn and somebody to second it and then we'll vote. So we'll move. Okay, so <laughs> Council Eagles, uh, motions to adjourn and seconded by Council Member Morgan. So all in favor of adjourning the December meeting of the MAC. Wow. Say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, passed unanimously. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. And what time is it? It is, uh, let's see, I look at my, my phone Thank says it's Happy holidays. 57. 57. Yeah, happy December holidays. Happy holidays, yeah, happy holidays everybody. Indeed. Stay safe. Thanks, Chair Dawson. Bye-bye, guys. Welcome. Bye-bye.